G'day guys, welcome to a 3v3 on Lakeland, and on my team I have Judkins and also Thompson, so you'll be hello to Thompson. I haven't seen him play AS2 that often, those who are watching probably know him from AS1, pretty good player. And we are the Commonwealth, and we are going up against the German team with Diddy Siskunigatis and Lockie 717 and his teammate, I can't remember his name but we'll see in due time. So going to the center with Judkins, I spawned on the left but I'm not sending my jeep there or units, not too many units, just capping the flag sparingly with single rifles because I spawned on the left which is basically closer to that left flag to the enemy. So worst case, he'll get there in a um, long time, if he does push that flag. So I can make the most impact in the center, go in the jeep. This is a denial of the flag for Lucky, so he can't come down to the center to cap it or build sandbags. So taking out around three for four, no, four to five guys as well. Let's see over here. Really the jeep is very, I think, good in team games, overpowered in team games. Even this map is a 4v4 on Lakeland, you're fighting on one flag, in comparison to the 1v1s where you're fighting on three flags, uh, it'll be even, even better in a 3v3 default uh, player size map. So we're playing this 4v4 map as a 3v3 and it's still so good. But they are going to get nerfed in the next patch. The armor of the Jeep is really strong right now. I think it's at 10, if you consider it as a number scale. Basically it is a number right now. It's around 10 and they're going to reduce it to about 5, uh, the armor. So it should be able to be destroyed more easily from small arms in the next patch. Whenever that comes, <laughs> it's coming soon hopefully. I got the message from Instinct just a few days ago that they are preparing another patch, a more stable beta patch. So that kind of says it, it won't be released this week, maybe next week if this stable beta patch goes well. So going flag to flag, just making my presence, presence known I suppose, making efficient use of troops and making an impact in the battlefield. Because I don't want to be just camping the left flag doing nothing. It's very important as an ally or team player in a game to really make your presence known and make an impact, do damage. And really, I think right now, oh, nice grenade there, I think, oh, boy. good skill, wonderful grenade. So I got the center and southern with the help of the jeep. Um, I put it down to, to that, made it a lot easier. I think it's really a must buy right now to win the game. And just going to dodge 220 MP. This is another unit that's going to be nerfed in the next match. Because right now, if I buy this, it just basically counters all the German light vehicles. But you'll see shortly, uh, he got a bit lucky. <laughs> or I got a bit unlucky. I think I got a bit unlucky. So saying it there to just counter that 222 on the right so Thompson doesn't need to get one. And Jeep is still surviving. See how, how crazy it is? You can't really decrew it. It's really hard to damage it. Just go flag to flag, just killing stuff. Try to take it out from here. Sapping my ally. No good. I can't hit moving targets. Remember, let the AI shoot moving targets. So, damn it, that would have been a good shot. So unfortunately, there goes my dodge. Missed two shots. That, there was a little slight decline to the heel if you didn't notice on the map where the 222 was running. So the dodge didn't have a really easy shot. You're moving away, but I think the main gun is down. So it only has the MG to fire from. So going another dodge, it's uh, trying to go another dodge comes out. I think uh, Jitska's got a leak on down the center so it should be easily capped. Yes, Pushing a bit forward in my infantry, single infantry there just to make sure there's no huge assault coming soon. And just going to black watch as well. Just get the superiority of numbers as you do 
with the allies. Uh, 2223 up, but I see he's got a leak on, and I think I've seen someone buy a tank as well, so a uh, Crusader AA, so I won't go that dodge. I'll wait for a tank instead, because he's gone the Crusader AA. Just in case I go a Panzer three encounter that Crusader AA, I got a um, got a Cromwell to deal with it. So I'm gonna try assault, I think, after my Cromwell pushes, um, I can try and attack the back flag on the northern point uh, for two reasons, uh, because I think it's uh, good to pressure, second that's a weak point in the enemy terrain in my opinion, because there's a hill just above the flag, really any any hills you can use as a really easy way to def defend something, you can just camp below hills, not on top of the hills, just below it. So everything that comes over will get shot. So I'm just fixated. I'm going to try to take that sniper out. I know the sniper's there somewhere. Um, it's taking me out pretty well. Just going to make sure my Cromwell doesn't get killed first. And now I'm going to try to take out that veteran sniper. So try to box it in with my Cromwell. And it's probably going to run away. And I'll just ambush it on the way. There goes the veteran sniper. You can see how to deal with the veteran sniper. You just gotta be really quick. And I've got more infantry than him because I got the black watch, and he gets the veteran sniper sniper at one special points. So if you feel new players, I know that a lot of new players do think the veteran sniper is OP. It's the re the reason why it is is if you just cap a position and just wait for the veteran sniper to kill you. Obviously, it is OP. Um, but if you play a certain way, you have to play aggressive because it's an attritional weapon, the veteran sniper. Once um, you don't let it have time, it'll be useless. As there. So take out that 2 to 2 through the tracks. Um, H is going to struggle to hit me. See that hill? See, I'm using this hill. I'm going to uh, now just camp below this hill, and that H cannot really come at me. From the, or shoot at me from that range, so it has to come at me if it wants to make progress in this area. So, this weak spot here in this Lakeland map, I'm just going to camp it. Infantry come up, bam, before they get to shoot back. And also same with the tanks. Oof, that was lucky there. Oh no, and this was lucky too, actually. Um, my infantry just came a bit late. I must say that was lucky, damn lucky. Uh, standing shot by Panzerfaust, should miss though. And that 80 grenade should have damn killed. Oh yeah, either way, it's, it worked out the same, I remember. So now that's uh, pretty much dead. So I need some sort of... Um, uh, vehicle killer now. So the enemy uh, is the host, I believe. Oh, no, Jukums is the host. So I do have about 250 to 300 MS. So it's not. I can't really direct control the grenades or use them very well. Uh, this is another example, I guess, of a game where you you don't need direct control to win. When Lakeland's a kind of map, you don't. It's a wide open space, there's everywhere, there's hills, there's terrain, you can use it in your advantage. It's not a complete grenade fest, that's what I'm, sort of, that's what I'm saying. Really, what really matters in uh, laggy games is units getting stuck at spawn, units not moving sometimes when you click on it, and also grenades. Other than that, lag shouldn't make much of a difference. You can compensate for most things, except the grenade part, uh, but on some maps you don't need to grenade. I'm just trying to get lucky with this SMG, maybe he won't notice me, but nah, he's got me for sure. Uh, infantry, you saw me. So I got a HG um, on the field, 2 to 2, I need to take out that quickly, so just going to Crusader A because I'm quite comfortable in this hilly area. There's enough terrain for me to hide and ambush, hide from bigger tanks and to take out uh, units. So, okay, Crusader A. Take that out. Uh, this unit's going to be, it's firing at uh, 0.5 shots per second. It's going to be basically now 1 point per second in the next patch. So, dispatch the area. Great infantry killer and tank killer.
So I'm not playing uh, new players by all means, guys. If you're new players watching, these are uh, probably one of the best guys in Europe. I got a bit lucky there. Well, I'm getting lucky this game. <laughs> I'll say. But now he can't get me through that hill. Um, there's a few, yeah, we, the competitive community in Men of War for you players. Competitive community or community in Men of War is quite, quite smallish, but so uh, yeah, we are, we are quite close knit, so we know everybody really who plays the game or plays the game well. Uh, but there's really a few groups that aren't really melded into the competitive community, like these guys, like Didisis and Lucky, and really the Russian players don't, uh, that don't really hang out with the English competitive community. So games like this where, where we fight these players are quite rare and also in the tournament too it's going to be interesting to see because we don't really see many of these matches versus the best uh, Eastern European and Russian players and in the tournaments you'll be able to see them in action. The style is quite different I must say, uh, very attritional in my opinion it's one. It's AS2, AS1-esque seems like, for me, um, they are very, very static or, I guess, very cautious in some of their gameplay. Where the current competitive community is a do, do, do rational. Um, sorry guys, this dog's going crazy. Bear with me. Looks. Okay, someone was at the door. Sorry about that. Got uh, got two dogs. Got a, a Chihuahua cross Jack Russell. They're called Jack Cheese, and we've also got a West Highland Terrier. Uh, the Chihuahua Jack Cheese, a stray we picked up. But uh, Westy was uh, my wife's favorite breed so we got one of those um, not my favorite breed <laughs> I wanted a, a can terrier you know those little uh, little little terrier terriers that look very scruffy and scrappy that's what I want my next dog hopefully will be that uh, but I'm gonna leave my son to choose uh, but I'm gonna bring him only to a can, can, can terrier farm and he can choose one of those <laughs> so um, yeah looks down so just hulling down with this Crusader eh? in a position where it's quite safe from anyone who will, any tanks that want to kill it, you can just pop out and shoot. So I've been focused a lot on my side. I've been tying up not only one player, because I, I saw Diddy Sisters H there and some other vehicles, so tying up a few players up there, but now, see they've quietened down in my area. I don't want to just camp now. I want to make my presence uh, known on the map make efficient use of my troops and help my ally. So even though my front's quieting down, I've got my enemy uh, pinned down quite far, I'm st I still want to make an impact somewhere else. So keeping, keeping an eye on the minimap in the top left, I see a, a tank coming, so I'm just going to be wary of that. And looks like Thompson and, and Jitkins are doing okay on their end for now. Get a side shot, perhaps. No, no good. So I'm gonna wait a bit till I, I get into range. Oh, T E comes closer. Uh, two 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 coming. So two two coming. I need to take it out. I should be able to kill it just before um, I get in range for that P three. Get a nice grenade off here. Watch in a moment. Yep. Now I can come out. The balance in for your AS1 veterans, for AS2, really, for the allies, you need to be aggressive, in my opinion. 
just the way the way that your units work to use them optimally. Because you have the numbers, while Germans don't. And Germans may have better tanks later on to Veteran Tiger. You just got to be aggressive to, to take advantage of opportunities, as you can see that SMGs uh, killed that P3 because I took advantage of the chance. Just always going for something. Happens a, a lot. That, was the, that wasn't a fluke kill in the P3, that, uh, that just ha that happens every game. You, you kill tanks with just 80 grenades or things like that. Take out there. Just locking down, just really a turkey shoot, really. Just getting the right ma right area in the map to be able to use the Crusader A. Hey. <coughs> I'm kind of outplaying my opponent, Alejandro, that's his name. Probably isn't, uh, probably the lesser skilled out of those uh, Digi System Lucky. So I did have an easier time. Um, so sure why he went the 2 to 2 there, especially because of my Crusader. He could turret my Crusader AA with this 20mm cannon if he wanted to, but that's from far, from closer range. There was a few moments with the other 2 to 2 he could have tried that. But uh, yeah, that's a wrap guys, just thought I'd post this one, They're, because we don't get to play these uh, top European Russian players often. When we do, it's an event that uh, <laughs> everyone in the English competitive community would like to see. Uh, see what happens, and um, yeah, Godwin, Godwin will be watching happily after um, their lashing. Bit of a uh, bit of, bit of uh, revenge for you, mate. <laughs> Shout out. Anyway, see you guys.